Hey everybody, this is Greg Fine and welcome to another video on the Web Audio API. Today I want to talk about a topic that I think is pretty cool and that's called detuning. The reason I think it's cool is because it allows us to take our simple oscillators, simple waveforms like the sawtooth for example, and start stacking them and creating slight variations in tuning. And these slight variations in tuning are what help us to bring more character to the sounds. In particular, it helps us make some of our sounds a little bit thicker, a little bit fatter, and also helps us achieve a little bit of an interesting kind of movement to our sounds. And this movement comes as a result of the slight differences in frequency when we stack oscillators and detune them. So in this video, we're going to look a little bit more at the audio theory behind detuning, and we're also going to look at it in actual code so you can see how to achieve this effect for yourself. We're going to grab that detune audio param and experiment with some different settings to see how this detuning thing can be a useful tool in our toolbox. Now, of course, here, as you know by now, we have an audio context set up on line one assigned to const ctx. And since this effect will require more than one oscillator, we're going to go ahead and set up a constructor function, which we can use to create oscillators and help keep our code dry. Let's define a function called oscillator. And here we'll capitalize the word oscillator, since the convention is to capitalize the name when creating a function that's intended to be called with the new keyword. And let's think about what we want to do in this function. Well, of course, we're going to have to create an oscillator, which we'll do on the audio context object. And we'll assign it to this.osc. And then let's go ahead and connect it to our speakers or our audio output. And we can do this by taking the oscillator and connecting it to the context.destination. Let's also use the type parameter on the oscillator node and assign it to the sawtooth waveform type. I'll use Sawtooth because Sawtooth is commonly used with detuning for electronic music type bass and lead sounds. And then we'll want to start and stop the sound. And we'll start the sound immediately and stop it after three seconds. We'll give it three seconds so that we have enough chance to hear the result of the detuning which we're gonna apply. Now the reason that we're using the this keyword here is that when we invoke this function, we'll be doing so with the new keyword. Let me show you what I mean. Let's create a const osc1 and assign it to calling this oscillator function with the new keyword. In this case, the object that's returned from invoking this function will be assigned to osc1, and therefore osc1 is what the this keyword will be referring to. And so all these properties here will become properties on OSC1. And you're going to see why this is actually useful right now. You see, each time a new oscillator instance is created, I want that particular instance to have certain values that are unique to it. The two parameters that we're going to assign here are frequency and detune. And both of these are audio params on the oscillator node. In the body of the function, we can set up this.osc.frequency.value and set that equal to the frequency that we pass in. And then we can set up this.osc.detune.value and this will get assigned to whatever detune value we pass in as the second argument. So an example of how we can use this is we can take that first oscillator we created and now pass in a frequency value and a detune amount. For this oscillator, we made the frequency 440 or 440 hertz, which is the default actually, by the way. And we set the detune amount to zero, which is also the default for detune. Now we can go ahead and set up a second oscillator which we'll call osc2 and invoke the oscillator constructor function with the new keyword. And we'll give this one the same 440 hertz as the frequency, but we'll pass in a value of 10 for the detune value. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to first play Oscillator 1 by itself. And then after, I'll play Oscillator 1 along with Oscillator 2 so we can hear the difference. So here's Oscillator 1. And now here's oscillator 1 with oscillator 2. Well, hopefully you could hear that there was a difference between oscillator 1 by itself and oscillator 1 combined with oscillator 2. Listen one more time as I play the two examples again. And notice how oscillator 1 by itself sounds a bit more plain, while oscillator 1 with oscillator 2 has a bit more movement to the sound, as well as being a bit thicker. So, what exactly are we doing here? Well, even though both oscillators are playing at basically the same frequency of 440 Hz, oscillator 2 is detuned just slightly higher in frequency here. 10 cents higher, to be exact. Now just so you know, the detuning range that we have to work with is 0 to 100. And this is because each half step or semitone in our musical scale can further be subdivided into 100 cents. So 50 cents would be half of a semitone, and 25 cents would be a quarter of a semitone. Now given that we have this wide range of 100 cents, why did we use such a conservative number of 10 here? Well, let's try 75, for example, and see what happens. Yeah, as you can hear, that sounds pretty strident and abrasive. You see, once we start getting beyond about 20 cents or so, we start getting this extreme modulation or beating effect. Also, the sense of what the fundamental pitch is supposed to be gets obscured. Now let's bring the detuning amount of the second oscillator back down to 15 cents. All right, first I'll play just oscillator one, and then I'll play oscillator one with oscillator two. And listen to how even when I bring in the detuned oscillator, you still get a sense of what the basic pitch is supposed to be. And also listen and see if you can hear a sense of pulse or movement to the sound. The pulsation here being more subtle and slower than the pulsation that we heard when the detune amount was set to a more extreme 75 cents. Now let's set that detune amount back to 75 and see if you can hear how much faster the beating or pulsation has become. Also, you should be able to hear that the tonal center has become much more obscured. We really can't tell if this pitch wants to be up or down a semitone. Let's listen. So a good basic rule of thumb for your detuned sounds is to keep the detuned oscillators within a range of 1 to 20 or 1 to 25 or so. Now, of course, we can keep stacking oscillators and create even richer detuning sounds. Since we have this oscillator constructor function, we can just go ahead and create a third oscillator. So we'll say const osc3 equals new oscillator. We'll give this one the same basic frequency, 440. But we'll give this one a detune value of 15. And let's set the second one to 10. So we have the basic fundamental pitch here in osc1. And then we have osc2 which is set to a detune value of 10, and then OSC3, which is set to an even greater detune value of 15. Let's start by hearing oscillator 1 by itself, and then we'll bring in oscillator 2 on the second go around, and then oscillator 3. So what you can hear is that with each layering of detuned oscillator, we're getting a different kind of thickness and modulating pulsation. If we simply layered two oscillators with the exact same frequency and no detuning, and we had them play at the same time, we would simply get an increase in amplitude. With the phase of the waveforms being in alignment, an increase in amplitude occurs. 
Now, if both oscillators have the same frequency value, but are simply shifted in time, a phase shift will occur, but the timbre will remain constant, as their frequency values are the same. But once you detune an oscillator against another one, its waveform will be moving at a slightly different rate, which creates this sense of pulsating phase or beating, as the phase and amplitude differences of the waveforms are constantly being varied. In this video, we learned about the detune audio param on the oscillator node, and we saw how it can really be useful in a very musical way to create thicker and more vibrant sounds. We talked about the concept of semitones and scents, and saw that if we stay within a certain detuning range, we can really get some nice musical coloration and thickening without losing that sense of tonal center. So if you got something out of this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel so I can bring you more videos just like this one. See ya.